minimum to leave out of the club, I mean, on a Monday, Tuesday, whatever day, it was 500. I had to make $500 a day or I wasn't going to stop. Matters if I would leave the club and I would have to go to an after hour club, I was going to, I was going to hit my quote. Like I was set, set, set an amount that I would need to make for that night, a minimum. It was never a max, but a minimum of what I was happy with going home with. And also she do know the lower class of life. It ain't always been peaches and creams. I've literally watched my sister go from struggle to strength. Yeah. So, so. Count money, count money, get money, get money, count money, suck, get money, get money, count money, count money, get money, get money, count money, suck, get money, get money, count money, count money, look, what? I used to have nothing, but now I got a whole lot of everything, and I come to study, and not a whole world gon' know my name, and I used to have nothing. I was about. 13, 14, I got stabbed at this very same store right here. Um, I didn't even know the girl. She came from my those complex over there. And it was something going on in the inside of the store with me and my cousin. And I was a high head. When I say I was a high head, I was a high head. Anything. Like you couldn't say nothing, nothing out of line to me. But she came in the store and she was saying some stuff. And before I knew it, I asked her who she was talking to. And she said she was talking to Texas. So when she said she was talking to Texas shit, I figured she was talking to me too. So we fought all the way from the inside of the store to outside to right in this parking lot. In this parking lot, um, in the middle of the fight, she just started stabbing me. I noticed she was stabbing me when she hit me right here. She stabbed me and I got this stab wound right here. This the when I realized she had the knife. So <clears throat> I started screaming because I, I was in shock. I started screaming, asking people to get up off of me. She got her teeth in me right here. She stabbing me. She had to stab me in my legs. She stabbed me everywhere. She stabbed me probably about about eight, nine times. <clears throat> I left. I lived in these complex right back here. I ran after she stabbed me. I ran all the way through here. They done remodeled these apartments. They didn't look like this at first. Shit, I, I just couldn't make it. I tried to make it though. And I couldn't make it. So I think my family, my sister, my mama, everybody came around here. And got me from right here. Amblems came. I had on all white. I remember I was just soaked in blood. Oh my God, I was soaked in blood. I was so scared. Um I'm gonna see if we can see these apartments when we get by right here. You're gonna be able to see them. They was called Patrick Apartments. I'm not sure what they call now, but back then they was called Patrick Apartments. You can see them right here. Everybody know her as Haley Tubbs, but as far as me being her big sister and with all our other siblings, we all call her Gal. And that's because she had a little spiffy attitude coming up as a little girl. And we would always say, she was like hot and fast. So we would always say, sit your ass down, Gal. A Gal this, a Gal that. So that's the nickname that we know her by. Me as her older sister, I literally took on the responsibility of raising her at the age of 14. So I had her doing high school time. And I just remember during the time of having her, she was very smart in school, always been a go-getter, and she always had a listening ear. Whatever I taught her, whatever I told her, she took it and it was like, it was platinum, it was gold. And she literally took everything that I taught her and applied to today's life right now as we speak. 
I remember when she was 18 and she told me she wanted to talk to me. And I was like, okay, what you want to talk about? And she told me that she wanted to be a stripper. And I was like, what? Out of everything in the world, you want to be a stripper? So I tried to get to her and I put her in nursing school. She went to nursing school for about three months. And she said that, that that wasn't for her, that she really wanted to be a stripper. So I just kept it real with her. And I told her, okay, well, if you want to go shake your ass, make sure you make cash. Don't let no nigga stick his hand in your pussy for $2. Mm -hmm. You put a price on it. Let that price be two, three hundred, <clears throat> two or 300 up. And I'm being real. This is what I told her. If this is what you want to do. And a lot of times with that vibe of being a stripper, niggas want to hit, they want to do this, they want to do that. Make your price high. That way a nigga going to back off. And so all you have to do is just shake your ass or whatever. But when you go into that world like that, you have your mindset top dollars. And don't treat yourself like you're on a clearance rack. Strip club. The strip club for me was a was a was a a big deal because I love to dance. I mean, I didn't know how to strip a dance, but I knew how to like street dance. Let me see what I knew how to I knew how to street dance, but I didn't know how to strip a dance. So I used to, you know, I used to dance, but I used to like prance around the club, prance around the stage because I had a nice body. So my body really got me through a lot of stuff. I didn't have to say much because a guy would see my body and just looking at my body, it, it it was on from there. Like he was choosing. Getting money in a strip club was never, was never, you know, hard for me because it, it came pretty easy. I met Haley over 10 years ago in the strip club, Fox to be exact. We was shaking ass and they was throwing cash. I can honestly say she was one of the most hated girls at Foxy's. When it came to her, she was about a bad. They did not like her because she was pretty. She had all the men that came in that just for fame. When it came to fame, you know, the ball of niggas coming in, they coming just for her. They don't want nobody else. They want only her. I can honestly say I'm proud of her because we both went through the struggle together. If I could change my life, if I could change anything, I probably would because what I've been through, where I come from, that's who make me who I am today. I came from nothing and I turned it into something. So, you know, I always look at my life and I'll be like from struggle to strength because I used to really struggle. I used to struggle with a lot of things like I used to struggle with just being me. I used to struggle with that because I've been through some stuff like I've been through a lot of stuff. When I say a lot of stuff, I've been through a lot of stuff and I'm talking about in from whatever you can think of. I've been through that. Um, I was about 16. I can remember being about 16 when my sister came to the school. I was going to Willow Ridge and she came to the school and I didn't know why she called me out of class, but she called me out of class and she said we had to go. I didn't know why we had to go, but we had to go. And when we got in the car, she had told me that my daddy died. I was a daddy's girl, so that was, that was a big deal to me. My mom, my daddy, I was my daddy pig, so uh, my mama hated me. Driving to my mama grave. My mama passed. And that's a very, very sensitive uh, I never talk about my mom. I never really bring her up because I try to, you know, forget a lot of stuff. It's funny because she buried right behind my stool. I haven't been to the grave site. I don't know how long. It's a 
it's a big step for me to, you know, drive to the graveyard right now. I kind of put it in my mind. You know, uh, it's nothing but a shell here. And my mama is in heaven. The spirit is... Spirit is, is in heaven. His absolute body is prison with the Lord. I took my mama dead pretty hard because I knew once she was gone, it wasn't that was it. It was it was it was no more mama. That's it. You get one mama. Once she gone, that's that's a wrap. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Preach to the Lord, oh yeah, yeah. Preach to the Lord, oh yeah, yeah. Silent and fuck with the mother guys. And I know they got some angels looking down on me. Yeah. I know they got some angels looking out for me. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep rolling. My mama praying. In my mind, I'm like, I can't believe you got me up here. <laughs> What's absent with the body is prison with the Lord. What's absent with the body is prison with the Lord. What's absent with the body is prison with the Lord. <sighs> I can remember like yesterday when I got that phone call. I had just hung up the phone with my mama. And I had just hung up the phone with my mama. I mean, it hadn't even been two hours. And I got a call. Well, I got a call. I got about 120 calls because I was asleep and I turned my ring off. I got about 120 calls. When I woke up, my phone was froze. I had so many missed calls and text messages. When I woke up, I got the look in, and I just saw my sister. I saw my, I saw my sister, my all my sisters. I saw my niece. My niece had been called me so many times, and that. When I called back, that changed my entire life at that moment when I called back. When I called back, what I got was, you need to come to Houston. I was living in Dallas. And my sister called. I mean, she. by the time I powered my phone off and powered it back on, turned it off and turned it back on, <clears throat> my sister was calling again. And when I picked up, she asked me what I was doing. And I said, I, I was asleep. She started yelling at me. And she was fussing. And she was like, why are you not answering the phone? And this, 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 and this. And blah, 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 blah. And I was like, what's, what's wrong? What's wrong? And that's when she told me I needed to come to Houston. And I said, why? And she told me my mama passed. And when she said my mama passed, I think my whole life just stopped. I just passed out in the middle of the street. I passed out. I was outside because I knew it was something wrong. My little brother was sleeping in the room and I went in and I told him, I say, Bumba, and get up. I said, get up. Something wrong. Something wrong. I got all these missed calls. And I had just talked to my mama before that because I told her, Mama, you better come get this boy. Um, he, he he playing truth to that with me in the pool and he gonna end up drowning and she said you better not let my baby drown 
And I say, you know he can't swim. And I mean, it hadn't been two hours. I had to, went to sleep, turned my ring off, and I woke up. I had all those missed calls. I called back, and my sister said, my mama had passed. I did every bit of 200 trying to get to Houston, and my car only went to probably 110. But I did every bit of 200. I pushed it all the way here, and I still miss my mama. They held out as long as they could. And I didn't see my mama until it was time for her funeral. Everybody got to see my mama but me and my little brother because we was, we was at my house in Dallas. Raised in 790, what's the little yard? Lincoln Park Apartments. Well, who? <laughs> um, like growing up, where we came from is like it was a struggle, big struggle. Haley has made a big, big move in her life. I watched this little girl from little girl grow into from running around her and her brother. Scotty made you say, yeah, my boy, y'all get in the house. Come on. They, she, she was bad. She did what she wanted to do, but now it's her strength. I'm very proud of her. She has made a big change in life. Big, big change. And I was talking to her. I commented to her on one of her posts um, visiting her mom's grave and all I can think of and Miss Scotty May used to sit on the porch. She used to be like, we're going to ride. Soon Gail pull up. She pull up in that gray Lexus. Get out with her dog. She come talk to her mother. She leave. And it's just like, I'm, I'm just amazed at, you know, just how she just have just became the woman that she is and owning her own businesses and, you know, things like that. I'm a little nervous. But I want to cry. Like, it's just a, a big Big movement for her growing up from what we came from. Living my dream, if they could see me now, see me now. pretty much everybody like literally and now to have my own my own place something that's mine like that that means a lot to me like coming from where I came from just not not having much of nothing like that is a lot that's that's a, that's a lot for me that's a lot I mean I didn't lived everywhere every high rise every loft but nowhere more than three consecutive years so you know, now I have this that I built from ground up. I could possibly, I mean, leave it to my children, to my grandchildren. You know, something for them to inherit. It. So coming from nothing, this this is a lot. This this a lot. This a lot. This 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 a lot. This a lot. I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful. 
thankful because I'm still in disbelief. Like, like for somebody at my age to have the stuff that I have, like that's 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 a lot. I'm thankful. I don't even know what to say. I'm so thankful. I never ever imagined having something of my own. You know, having something of my own. I always been rent. Like I always was renting stuff. And people talk about me because I never stayed nowhere more than three consecutive years. So this is a lot. And I, a lot of times I still can't believe it's mine. Like this is mine. Like this is mine. I work for this. No handouts. Nobody gave me nothing. Come here, Blanca. Nobody gave me nothing. Like I work, I work my behind off for this. I work my behind off for everything I have. And it's amazing and it's a blessing family for me is a struggle because I have the family members that well let me say this my mama have eight kids and let me not leave this out I've stayed with all my brothers and sisters I've needed all of them we've kind of needed each other so you know it come hand in hand but I've never stolen anything from nobody in my family. I didn't have money stolen from me. I'm talking $30,000, like it was $30. I've had family talk about me, say I am, I'm nothing but a high class hoe. Although I wasn't selling my, my, my body for money, I wasn't doing drugs, I wasn't drinking, I wasn't doing none of the above. Like I was really, upholding myself like a, a young lady, even when I was in a strip club, but yet, my own family would beat me down. They would, would beat me down with words, and I don't know if they even realized how painful. Ooh. I don't even know if they realize how painful that is. Because it hurt when it come from people you look up to. And people that you know you would never do anything to harm or to break a bond with. And for them to, you know, treat you like you nothing, that's, that's hard. Like, that's hard. So... Imagine how hard it is for me to keep going after that kind of trauma that I've been through in my life. Well, with the, the, the bad talk, the negativity, looking at me like I'm not nothing, you know, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a hurtful feeling, but it, it's funny to me now because I look back at myself and I look at myself now. And I'm doing better than most people that beat me down the way that they did. And that's not bragging, it's just saying like, you never know where you're going in life. You never know where you're going in life. You, you never know. And for the ones that's going through the same thing that I'm going through, the best thing I can tell you to do is hold on, hold on and believe in you. Because if you don't believe in you, You're going nowhere fast. You have to believe in yourself. And that's what I did. I believed in me. I believed in me. And because I believed in me, I'm where I'm at today. Sitting on deuces while the burn. Still been rap music because I want more. All money in, it's just us four. It's just copy, it's just hobby, it's just rap off. It's just Adam, it's just black salmon, both the fast. Where your 600 bands, where your rovers at? Where your Cuban links, where your rollies at? Where your big booty bad, staple posters at? Where you hustle, where you run from the police at? Where you ever represented hope, where the hopeless at? Where you had to take an oath for you sold the sack? Dealt with all the pressure, played it like you never noticed that. Amongst it all, put yourself on the map. Turn it to a booming operation, where your focus at? Where your 600 bands, where your rovers at? Where your Cuban link, where your rollie at? I would rather shoot before I run Pressure on my shoulder when done 
You should try and do what we done Make a million dollars while you young I would rather shoot before I run Pressure on my shoulder where it come You should try and do what we done Make a million dollars while you young So if you could tell us how exactly and what deal you did to make your first million dollars my husband tell me like, if, if they ain't talking, baby, you ain't doing something right. They doing what they supposed to be doing. And I ain't never really understand that like back then. And that man opened my eyes up to a lot of stuff. I ain't gonna lie, like, I will honestly say my husband changed my whole entire life. He changed my my views on things. Like I never seen things from from that point of view until you know, I got with him, like, he's a whole different type of animal. He's an entirely different type of animal. We not the, I wouldn't say, oh, we just lovey-dovey. We not like that, man. Me and that man have, a, like, a business ship. Like, don't get me wrong, like, we in love, and the love is there, but it's more so, like, you know how you look forward to things from certain people? Like, you look forward to your 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 significant other doing certain things. What I look forward to is him, like, giving me giving me the game on stuff. Like, I be getting frustrated, and I be wanting to just be like, fuck this, I don't want to do it no more. I'm tired. And I look forward now, I, I built up something where I look forward to him basically, like, telling me shit. That shit gonna pay off, keep going. And when I get to getting distracted and stumbling over stuff, guess what? He be right there to kind of like pick me up and, and, and tell me, put your head in the game. You know what I'm saying? Or you slacking or you bullshitting or you focusing too much on this instead of focusing on that. So he, the haters don't matter because he didn't gave me something like, he didn't just buy me nothing. He he taught me something, and I can take that with me for the rest of my life. Like, that man taught me a lot. And I think that's when my life changed when I got with my husband. You know, I had already been doing nice things and, you know, flying and taking trips. And, you know, I tell my husband all the time, you didn't make me this way. You, you, you found me this way. I was already molded. I just needed my break to, to take off and go where I was trying to go. I just needed my break. I hadn't caught my break yet. I knew I had it in me. My mama was a hustler. My daddy was a hustler. I just didn't, I hadn't had my break yet. And I caught my break when I when I got with my current husband. And I didn't catch my break solely just off no money. I caught my break because I had somebody to actually take the time out and teach me something. Like teach me, teach me something. These days, a man to buy you something all day long. I done had men to buy me, oh my God. I'm talking, if you name it, he done bought it. From, a, from you know, places to live, to foreign cars, to, you know, if you name it, it done, it done probably been bought for me. So to have somebody to come along and that can teach me something and tell me, <laughs> I need you in a position where you don't ever have to depend on another man in your life. That was it. That was it for me. That was it to the point where it's nothing that can break the bond. No matter what he do, he couldn't break that bond with me that I would have his back no matter what because you basically want something for me that I didn't even think I knew I kind of wanted it for myself, but I didn't think it through far, far enough to get to the point where, okay, I'm finna do this where I don't need another man for nothing. You gotta remember, I came from a, a strip club where everything was resolved, revolved around men. So being revolved around men, a man doing this, a man doing that, you hungry, you gonna call a man. Cause we get so spoiled that we don't wanna spend our own this is Marco Bricks. Um, like I said, she the first person I ever rode in a Rolls Royce with. She be hitting me with motivation all the time. When I'm finna mess up, she tell me, oh, it ain't worth that. It ain't worth this. 
she just be motivating me. She extra. Look at who we doing. <laughs> this is so extra. <laughs> but, you know, extra people always be the ones that you got to look out for. Because she's a special kind of person. Real talk. I don't know how to explain her. Ambitions, cool. She put me on game about you females, for sure. I mean, I would say that I would want a girl with the same ambition as my Amy. You know what I'm saying? Because she a go-getter. She work too hard sometimes. I'll be like, dang, you ain't going to never sit down? Nope, not into the season, no. <laughs> yeah, you know, but other than that, she, she 100. That's all I can say. I ain't never seen no flaw in her, for sure. Only flaw that she got is food. <laughs> she reminds me so much of her mom and her father, but on her father's side, she's just like her father. He was a go-getter, and she's a go-getter, too. She loved money. She loved having nice things and stuff. She loved her animals and stuff. Like I said, money, she going to get it, every minute necessary. And she ain't going to stop till she get to her destination. And uh, on her mama's side, boy, she reminds me so much, which is my sister, Scotty Mae, remind me so much of her. And uh, they, I mean, they just like twins. When I see my niece, I'm seeing my sister all over again. She have a ways. She love to eat my Scotty Mae grits that I cook for her all the time because her mother love to cook grits and stuff. And uh, like I say, man, my sister gone, but she not forgotten because when I look at my niece again, I see my niece, my sister all over my niece. And like I say, she a beautiful, built like her mama. Got an attitude like her mama, and she is her mama. Most people think this is a fairy tale like that that I live, but this isn't fairy tale. Like this is real life. This is hard work and dedication. Like this is sleepless nights, and I mean, staying up every day, every night, not knowing what my next move gonna be, just coming up and doing it as I go. Like that, that's me. I'm not planning it. Like I'm believing in it, and I'm just, just doing it. Anybody that know me will tell you. I don't even be planning half of the stuff through. I just come up with it and I just do it and it just works out. Like I put a lot a lot of hard work into to, to what I have. I started just thinking back on the tax ball, I started off um like on some partnership type stuff and that went totally sour because it was one of them situations where I didn't know much. I just had the, the money to go into it, but I didn't I didn't know much about the business. You know, I was coming from the strip club, so I didn't I didn't know much about the business side of the taxes. So I had to learn it from scratch. And I can remember dealing with people that scam me like every which way you can think of, they was scamming me, scamming me. I'm still going to court right now to this day, um, trying to sue certain people to get some of my money back that I lost back then and it's not that I need the money it's the principle like feeling like you just not gonna take nothing from me so I, I when I bring people into the business I tell them like that partnership stuff don't do it don't do it because it's not worth it because people people don't believe in partnership people don't believe in packing fair putting in you gotta always remember people not gonna put in just as much as work much work as you are they don't do that, that's unreal. It was a situation where I'm putting in all the money and you stealing money from me. Like who, who, who does that? So that's how I got into helping people just from what I had went through. I just felt like if God gave me my break, I wouldn't hurt people the way that I've been hurting. I, I, I wouldn't scam people the way that I've been scammed. Like I wanna do some the, the total opposite as far as like changing somebody's life. I want to give them what wasn't given to me, the support, you know, the finances if I had it, um, believing in them because I had nobody to believe in me. You know, like the, the small things that don't cost me a penny, that's what I get off doing. I like to see the smile on people's face. I tell anybody, whatever you do, you have to live with that decision. I don't care what you do. You have to live with that decision. Nobody else have to live with that decision. So if you with a guy, that, that that don't benefit you in no type of way, form or fashion, you wake up to that man and you feel that pain. You go to sleep to that man, you feel that pain. Don't let me decide up, up on what you're gonna do and how you're gonna do it. Stop going to everybody asking them for, for advice. Go to God. 
And this is another big thing I tell people all the time. Um, they be like, God, God, God. You never know who God is. Don't let this go over your head when I say this, but I put this on God. I'm not going to this. I put this on God. I'm not going to that. When God might be standing right in front of you. You never know who God sent in your life to through, through them and acting as him. Like, you just never know. I might be God. I feel like I'm God to a lot of people. Not being cocky, I feel like God put me in position to be in certain people's lives to change their lives. And that's why I do what I do. That's my passion. You can't touch God. You can't feel God. I may be God. You, you just never know. You never know. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Detroit. You probably remember me, huh? Wanna be a baller, shot caller, twenty plays on Impala. Yeah, I'm in the building uh, talking about my, my my daughter, self daughter, how you want to say it, gal. Y'all know about Haley, but uh, she grew up in my household with me. Can't live with me in like the ninth grade. Her, my other daughter, and them, everybody moved in with me, went to Jones and stuff. They were doing their thing, getting in trouble, fighting and stuff. You know what I'm saying? We were trying to show Gal because she was transitioning from moving from one direction over to what us it was a little more structured. So we were teaching her how to be entrepreneurial, how to work, and uh, how to live life on a, on a greater scale. And uh, they were living with me when I was doing one bill bottle. So, you know, we were living like out the roof at the time. You know, big old mansions and stuff, you know, all kind of Mercedes Benzes. Uh, every, every kind of car you could think about had in the driveway, they was driving and stuff, so she was getting to learn another side of life. Me and, her, me and her sister, you know, when she brought her in, we had nightclubs and stuff, so we were running nightclubs. She seen us running businesses and stuff. She seen me doing music. She seen me hustling. She seen me out in the streets. And uh, then when I started doing my son T2 album, Gab was one of the first girls we got to start dancing for my son. He was, she was dancing one of the back girl dancers and stuff in the videos and stuff. You go back and look in the, in the videos or in the, in the show, Gal was on, the, on on that dancing. And, uh, and I told him back then, I'm going to put a pole in the house because my daughter never wanted to dance nasty all the goddamn time. So I was going to put a pole in the house. I said, they're going to be strippers. And let, behold, Gal became a stripper. And when she started dancing, we was right there to support her the whole way. I sat her down and told her, look here, boo, don't let this strip club Get, get, get in the way of your dreams, what you trying to do. It's only a stepping stone to get this money. Don't get, don't get trapped up in no drugs, no pimps, all the bullshit that go on with the club and nothing like that. You'll have a successful run in the club and get that money. Treat it as a business. I don't care what you do in life, treat it as a business. Get the money and stay focused on what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? And that's what she did. She stayed focused on everything she done. And then next thing you know, one day I, I'm in the tax class and uh, I'm, in the, I'm in the oatmeal tax business. Look who come walking in. Gal come walking in, get ready to open her tax business. So we in the same class at the same time learning about taxes. She kept doing it. And next, look, look at it now, tax bar. She done came a long ways. Very, very successful young lady now. I'm so proud of her doing everything that she doing, you know what I'm saying? Like she say, she cap a little differently when you see her. You know, the girls talking about they got a hundred bags and a hundred pair of shoes. Gal say she got a hundred cattle and a hundred calves. Do the math, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. What's up, what's up? Count money, count money, get money, get money, count money, what's up? Get money, get money, count money, count money, get money, get money, count money, what's up? Get money, get money, count money, count money, look, what? I used to have nothing, but now I got a whole lot of everything, and I come to and now the whole world gon' know my name And I used to have nothing But now I got a whole lot of everything That's why I come through stunting When I'm gone, the whole world gon' know my name Twelve years old, caught up in that street life I was trying to sound harder than the street lights Ran the streets till I'm tired, couldn't sleep nights Cause when you're living wrong, it's hard to sleep right But it is what it is, gotta eat right Cotton pain that be whiter than your teeth right Dream some big things on my grandmama couch Hit some big things at my grandmama house Cause when you play the game, air strike counts And why they call them eight balls if they don't bounce You know, 
just showing some love. My girl Gal right here. I just got to thank her for being and paying attention to growing up with me in the household. She done took it to a whole nother level. I just want to thank you, baby, for paying attention, doing your thing. We living our best life. Hey, we don't give a fuck about you, <laughs> bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I want to say, man, I'm proud of my little sister, man. I hope she took her keep up the good work. And, uh, she came along with playing for the Bible. My name is Mimi. I've been knowing Amy for six years. I met her at tech school when she held her first tech class. She always kept it real. At first, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't like a crazy bitch. But then I got to like her. She's a real hard worker. She's a hustler. She gonna go get that money at all times. She taught me how to hustle. I hustle at the same time and get bread too. We stay in bread. So y'all gonna get motivated and get this money with it. Hi, my name is Nico. I am a friend of Haley. Uh, I met Haley at Fox's Cabaret maybe about five or six years ago. Uh, she was just one of those girls who had it, you know, she didn't do very much. Um, I would come in with the guys all the time and get her to tip her. And when her ship was over, she wasn't one of the girls that lagged around for attention. She got her money and she got her money. Um, throughout the years, I've just watched her progress and become um, such a wonderful young lady. She's become um, more knowledgeable in the business area. Um, she's just transitioned her life as a whole. Um, I'm just happy to be a friend of hers and just to watch her progress and see where life takes her. Congratulations, Amy. Well, I watch Haley grow. Haley is the true definition of strength, struggle, strength. Like, she never show it. Um, you, you always see her, if you notice, you always see her, you always see her teeth. She's always smiling. See the prison bars, flashing lights on top, we call them prison cars. Before my niggas make a living on their mobile phone. Ground hard till your earrings cost a mobile home. Ain't nothing wrong with that, get your mobile loan. Butt naked, get the stroke of song. Out of all the bullshit I could've focused on.